In this tutorial, we'll use QGIS version 3.2.3 .3 to run descriptive spatial statistics on both unweighted and weighted data. Our point pattern is a layer with 42 points, each representing a biting fly trap location on a study ranch, indicated by the polygon boundary. At each trap location, we have a catch per unit effort value indicating the number of biting flies captured per decimal hour, illustrated here by a red graduated symbol. We'll need two extensions, or plugins, to calculate the weighted descriptive statistics, and those plugins can be controlled under the Manage and Install plugins. To calculate standard deviational ellipses and the standard distance, we'll need each of the two plugins, standard deviational ellipse, standard distance. First, we'll calculate the unweighted mean center. In this example, we want to know if the trap distributions are representative of the study area or if they tend to have a bias towards one side of the ranch or another. We can calculate an unweighted mean using either the spatial point pattern analysis found under the geostatistics tools in Saga we can also calculate it using the standard deviational ellipses, unweighted. We can also calculate it by calculating an unweighted standard distance. Anytime we calculate a deviational ellipse or a standard distance, we'll get the mean center as an attribute of that file we create. To calculate the unweighted mean using the spatial point pattern analysis, we can launch the dialog box point to the shape file we're going to use, turn off these checkboxes for output files because QGIS will write temporary files even if you save permanent files. So what it loads in the map window will still be a temporary file. We're going to save this mean center to a file. I'm going to navigate to my folder. I'm going to name this file traps mean no weight for this example. And then we're going to run this process. Once the calculation is complete, I can add that new layer to my map window. And here we can see I have an unweighted mean center representing the mean X and mean Y of the 42 trap locations. Now we're going to calculate an unweighted standard deviational ellipse. We'll select our traps shape file. We will not use a weight. We'll leave the method by default and we'll name this standard deve no weight. And we can see we now have a standard deviation ellipse that's centered around our unweighted spatial mean. Now we'll calculate an unweighted standard distance using the standard distance plugin. We'll select our 42 points, our traps file. We'll leave our weight field that's optional with no selected attributes. We'll save this file to the folder we've been working in. I'll save this as standard dist no weight one. Again, I'll turn off to not add a temporary file. I'll run this. If I refresh my browser, I now have a new file. That's my standard distance circle. So I have an unweighted mean, standard deviational ellipse, and standard distance all calculated based on those 42 individual trap locations. We can calculate the weighted standard deviational ellipse by repeating the process and selecting use weights and selecting CPUE. We can repeat that same process with standard distance, selecting the weight field as CPUE. 
if I wanted to produce a layer or a show the geometry of the weighted mean center, I could open the attribute table and I could create a new point file from the mean x and mean y. So that's the weighted mean. And that would be the same for either the weighted standard deviational ellipse or the weighted standard distance. And I'm going to end up with three new files, a weighted mean center that's now shifted towards the CPUE high values, a standard deviational ellipse, and a standard distance that both show measures of dispersion around that weighted mean center. So in summary, we've calculated an unweighted mean center, standard deviational ellipse, and standard distance circle that show the distribution of those trap locations around the mean center and show they're located approximately in the center of the ranch, suggesting that we've sampled evenly across the ranch. If we look at the weighted descriptive spatial statistics, this time weighted by those catch per unit effort values, we can see that there's a shift in each of those three metrics. We can see a shift away from the mean, shifting north and east, and we see that that standard distance circle and the standard deviational ellipse both are now concentrated in the upper right quadrant or the northeast portion of the ranch, suggesting that while the fly traps were evenly distributed across the ranch, the catch per unit effort values were more heavily concentrated in this northeastern portion of the ranch. So that's how we can use descriptive spatial statistics to understand measures of centrality, where the mean center, and what the distribution of those locations, either weighted or unweighted, are around those mean centers.